attached to my massive ears are what? Yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. This is the two. <laughs> right. Okay, so here at Overclockers UK, we are the experts at overclocking, uh, and we're joined by uh, nicknamed Eight Pack uh, for quite obvious reasons. <laughs> uh, he's the UK's number one overclocker, uh, actually works for Overclockers UK, and today he'll be demonstrating he'll be demonstrating uh, some overclocking with liquid nitrogen. Uh, so you're going to see some pretty cool stuff, and I'll pass you over to Ian now. Okay, guys, what I'm doing here? Yeah, it's switched on, it's your... Quite problems, let me go turn it off. Yeah, yeah, it's on. Right, I'll, sh I'll try and show I've got a big gob anyway. What I'm doing for a start is, I'm gonna... Basically, what I'm gonna do for a start is pull the temperatures down to about minus 40 and train the memory. The memory likes to be trained at that kind of uh, temperatures. And also on LN2 overclocking, the CPU likes to have quite high base clock. If you're familiar with that. So I'm setting off at 105 BLK, or just short of 104.9 BLK, 56 multiplier, that'll give me almost 6 gigahertz CPU speed. In fact, now I'll start off at 6 gigahertz CPU speed. The DRAM timings for this particular set of memory, if you again if you're familiar, it's high nix, so it's gonna slope up and down. This memory speed, I'm going to go 9, 11, 10, 25, 1, with a latency boundary of 2. Most, most dims can't even perform at that latency boundary, but these are particularly good sticks, so they will have no problems. I'm setting a few sub timings here and getting ready so I can train the, train the memory. For the first bench, I'm going to run 3D Mark 05. That doesn't benefit at all from hyper threading, so I'm turning that off. In fact, hyper threading scores get, uh, gives you worse scores, essentially. The CPU voltage, uh, the DRAM voltage I'm going to put in is 1.875, don't try that at home. Uh, memory controller voltage about 1.2 to 1.25 and similar with the VCC SA. VCC IO, memory controller, you're, you're okay up to 1.2 on air to be honest. Uh, but VCC SA don't rack it up so high as well. BLK recovery. I'm going to sh set that to ignore, and that allows me to adjust settings on here without ever, uh, all the time the, the BIOS restarting and possibly call bugging. Okay, so I'm set up now, pretty much to boot into to to, uh, to train the memory. And I said that to have a copy profile uh, number eight. Nothing particular special about that. But I'll check my temperatures, minus 23 now, so I just want to pull down a touch more before I train memory, not too much though. So I'm just adding a tad of nitrogen. Temperatures are dropping dead slow. Obviously the more you add, the faster the temps drop. I'm trying to, trying to make sure the memory is accurately trained here. That's about right there. Right, restart, so I'm going to come back up at uh, that 105 BLK, switching the LN2 switch on there, on the motherboard. Oh wait, I'll now plug down in SSDs in. That's not always a good idea. Anyway, no, no bother. So for this benchmark, I'm going to be using Windows Vista because uh, for some reason, I don't know exactly why, but it's more efficient on this benchmark. So you score approximately 500 points extra for no extra effort. So we're not, there's nothing wrong with that at all. We're happy with that. Right, okay, now I'm going to step up the CPU voltage to 1.75 and cool the processor right down now, we're at minus 54. 1.75 volts, you want to be at least minus 100 before you're putting that kind of temperatures, uh, voltages through your CPU. Obviously the nitrogen's there boiling off fairly quickly.
And again a bit more, we're at minus 90 now pretty much. This should pull us down to about minus 120. Yeah, pulling down quickly, minus 100. This fan just will not sit. Minus 112. And drop in. See the nitrogen's boiling off really quickly because the, the pot's warmer than the nitrogen. There we are at one, minus 150 now. So we're going to add 1.85 volts now. Reboot. This time I'm going to go into Windows and start running a few benchmarks. the postcode cycle through. There we go. We're at nearly 6 gigahertz there, CPU speed. Temperature's minus 158. I'm dropping. That windows normally, that's a crash that I had yesterday as per. The problem with overclocking is obviously it's never completely stable, so you get the odd blue screen, or more than likely if you're going for records, you get 10 blue screens and one decent score. We're stuck here, we're not going into windows, one second. CPU now minus 171.5. Nitrogen now is not going to boil off so quickly because the pot's almost effectively as cold as the nitrogen. Awesome. Now I'm just going to adjust the, the operator. Oh, no, that's not what I want to do. Just want to adjust it, put it on uh, the final three cores, the benchmark that helps with the scores. And then I'm just going to slam up the CPU speed using my uh, using the laptop here. So 6 6.19, 6.295, 6.4 gigahertz. So we'll run this. Uh, we'll run this now at about 6.4 gigahertz and see how we go. Then we'll go up again after, have the, after we've run it once. We'll go up again, just adding a bit more nitrogen. This is what's called full pot benching. There's not many CPUs you can actually do a full pot on. A lot of them do cold plug, uh, which is why I'm often nervous with these kind of things. Uh, just check what the GPU is saying if the drive is installed properly. Yeah. Right, let's go. So we're benching that now at 6.4 gigahertz. The, uh, the GPUs have stopped clocks. I haven't bothered over clocking the GPU. I don't bother over clocking GPUs unless they're on LN2. For what I do, there's no point. This is just to demonstrate the CPU overclock.
when we tweak for online league as well, I, I, redu I reduce the level of detail as well, so the pad doesn't have to work so hard. But again, for this demonstration, I've left the level of detail up so you guys can actually watch what's going on rather than just look blur on the screen. This particular version of 3D Mark is very dependent on CPU power, not so much dependent on, on the graphics card you're using. You know, you'll only get an extra 2,000 points going from this speed of the GPU to twice the speed of the GPU. Whereas you get another 20,000 points and doubling the speed of the CPU. So the nitrogen is now just bubbling away nicely. It's not being you know, the, the, the first two flasks pull the temperature down. The next four flasks are conventional about three hours because once the pops at the temperature of the nitrogen, it, it doesn't boil off so quickly. This fan here is just sucking the sucking the condensation away from the system effectively. Obviously the GPU and stuff's not insulated. I don't want that falling back on the GPU. Once this has gone through, this is the version of three, this 3D Mark. I'm not too interested in the score, like I said, I'm just demonstrating the overclock on the CPU. And it hasn't. Yeah, a lot there. 